Mark Rosengarten. Welcome to... Ask Rosengarten. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ask Rosengarten. Today's question comes to us from Christine Kuba, and for me, it's kind of a redemption. See, the last time I saw a problem like hers was back in 1987 when I was taking analytical chemistry. The question was slightly different uh, using different substances, but the idea was the same. I had it on a test. It was on a yellow sheet of paper. I still remember it. Uh, in fact, there was also a lab involved with it. And you know what? I got it wrong back in 1987. Dr. Campion, even though you're no longer with us, I hope this makes you proud, because I finally get it right. Yes! The question is, a 4.450 gram sample of an ionic compound containing hydroxide, that's this, and an unknown cation, that's this, is dissolved in water and treated with an excess of magnesium nitrate. If a 1.515 grams of magnesium nitrate are formed, what is the mass percent of hydroxide in the unknown compound? Now, at first blush, this looks like a really difficult and complex problem. And it kind of is, but you got to look at it using the basic things that you already know how to do, like converting grams to moles and finding formula mass. That's what this problem makes use of. You see, there are 4.450 grams of metal hydroxide. The question that comes after tells me that the formula of this metal hydroxide is M. OH2. And when I react that with an excess of magnesium nitrate, I form 1.515 grams of magnesium nitrate. And the amount of metal nitrate is completely inconsequential. Let me explain to you what's going on here. We have two solutions, both metals that are soluble, which kind of narrows this down. Um, calcium hydroxide is soluble and barium hydroxide is soluble, and strontium hydroxide is soluble. So it kind of narrows down what this can be if we're dissolving it into water. Okay, and that makes sense because if there's two hydroxides, the oxidation number of the metal has to be plus two. And calcium, barium, and strontium, they all have plus two ion charges. When we react it with an excess of magnesium nitrate, what that's telling us is that we have more than enough magnesium nitrate to remove every last hydroxide ion from every single metal ion. Now, when we're done, we're going to have some magnesium nitrate left over, which will remain dissolved in the water. But all of the magnesium that reacted with hydroxide will precipitate out magnesium hydroxide, which is insoluble, which you can then filter out rinse and filter and rinse and filter and dry okay by heating it up to remove the water and that leaves behind not just the metal nitrate but whatever excess magnesium nitrate was left behind the idea here is to rip the hydroxide off of this metal so that we can figure out what the formula of this metal is we can figure out the identity this is what's called qualitative analysis the first part of the question asks what is the mass percent of hydroxide in the unknown compound? Well, we're not going to need to know that mass percent to find out the answer to the second question, which is what is the identity of M? But we'll take each question one at a time. So in order to figure out what the mass of hydroxide is, I first need to know what percent of the total formula mass of this compound is the hydroxide making up. Then I can take that percent of 1.515. So, hydroxide weighs 16.0 plus 1.0, that's 17, times 2. 17 times 2 is 34.0 grams per mole. That's the mass of a hydroxide per mole of magnesium hydroxide. Divided by, well, magnesium weighs 24.3. So, 24.3 plus 34.0 gives us a total formula mass of 58.3 grams per mole, which will cancel and we multiply by 100 to get the final answer. And that gives us 58.3% by mass. The hydroxide makes up 58.3% by mass of the total mass of the magnesium hydroxide. 
This is just a weird coincidence, okay? Don't read into this at all. Okay, so if the hydroxide makes up 58.3% of the mass, that means it's going to make up 58.3% of the 1.515 gram mass of this sample. So we take 1.515 grams and we take 58.3% of that. And that gives us 0.883 grams of hydroxide. Okay, that includes both of the hydroxide ions. So hydroxide makes up 0.883 grams of the 1.51 grams, uh, 1 grams of magnesium hydroxide. Now, remember what we said before, the law of conservation of mass says that if the magnesium removed every single hydroxide ion from our unknown metal, and that came out to 0.883 grams worth of hydroxide, that means that our original hydroxide was also 0.883 grams, all right? If you make 0.883 grams, it's because you started with 0.883 grams. So to find the mass percent of hydroxide in this unknown compound, well, the compound itself weighs 4.450 grams. So we divide this by 4.450 grams, cancel that out, multiply by 100, percent being the unit, and that comes out to 19.8%. Okay, let's recap this. The metal hydroxide had all of its hydroxides removed by reacting it with a magnesium nitrate solution. The nitrate with a spectator ion doesn't really enter into it at all. The magnesium stripped off every single hydroxide ion from this metal. Why? Because we used an excess amount of magnesium to guarantee we had enough magnesium to do the job. Then, the magnesium hydroxide weighed 1.515 grams. So to find out how much the hydroxide weighed, we first had to find out what percent of this mass is due to hydroxide, and that comes out to 58.3%, uh, and then we could take 58.3% of our mass, that tells us how many grams of hydroxide we end with, which is going to be the same, thanks to the law of conservation of mass, as the number of grams of hydroxide that we started with. And since hydroxide makes up 0.883 grams of the 4.450 gram sample, the mass percent of the hydroxide in this compound is 19.8%. Now, to solve the second half of this problem, what is the identity of this metal M, we don't actually need that 19.8%. That might be what threw you off. You might say, okay, I got this answer in percent. Now, how do I use that to solve the problem? Well, you don't. You actually, well, technically you could use it, but I'll show you a way around having to use the percent that's actually easier. It takes fewer steps than using the percent. All right, we know the compound weighs 4.450 grams. We know that 0.883 grams of that comes from OH2. So the remainder of it comes from the metal itself. So to find the mass of the metal, take the total mass, 4.450 grams, and subtract from it the amount that's not that metal, 0.883 grams. And that comes out to 3.567 grams. All right, so let me just show you what I figured out here. This is the mass that's hydroxide that we figured out from the previous problem. This is what we get when we take the total mass and subtract from it the mass of the hydroxide. That gives us the mass of the cation, this metal ion. Now, you could have used percent to figure this out, but it's kind of a roundabout way, and it wastes a little bit of time. Okay, so now what are we going to do with this? We're going to use the concept of figuring out empirical formulas, except we're going to do a little bit of a twist on it. You see, an empirical formula is a whole number mole ratio. So I need to find out how many moles of hydroxide I have, and that'll tell us how many moles of the metal we have. And then we can find its atomic mass, and from that, we can look up on the periodic table and figure out what metal it is. So what we need to do is convert grams to moles. Now, we already know that the formula mass of two hydroxide ions, as we already know from the previous one, 16 plus 1 is 17, and we're going to double it here because it's in the formula. That gives us a total of... 34 
0.0 grams per mole. We don't know the formula mass of this metal. That's what we're trying to find out, okay? So let's first find out how many moles of hydroxide there are. That comes out to 0 0.0260 moles of hydroxide. Now, the first time I tried this problem, I ended up beating my head against the wall because I was trying to find out how many moles of metal there are. And I said, well, there's a two here, so it's a two to one mole ratio. So whatever the moles of hydroxide are, the moles of metal must be half of that. And so I went 0 0.0130 moles. And I was getting this completely impossible answer. And then I realized what I did wrong. I already took care of that two by making the formula mass the mass of those two hydroxides. So I don't need to do that. If I had 0.0260 moles of the hydroxide ions, I'm going to have 0 0.0260 moles of the metal ions. All right, well, here's the great part. Formula mass is simply grams per mole, right? Grams per mole. Here, I divided to cancel out grams and leave you with moles. I knew the formula mass of the hydroxide. I don't know the formula mass of this metal. Oh, but I will. Because I'm going to take that 3.567 grams and I'm going to divide it by that 0 0.0260 moles. Look what that's going to give us. Grams per mole. And then we can just simply look it up on the periodic table. And that gives us a formula mass of 137 grams per mole. 137 grams grams per mole. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see what I just did here? I used the moles of hydroxide to find the number of moles of metal. And then I could use the grams of that metal divided by that number of moles, give us our atomic mass. And exactly what element has an atomic mass of 137 grams per mole? <laughs> it's barium! which makes total sense because it's one of the only plus two ions that can actually dissolve in water when hydroxide is bonded to it. The formula of this compound is BaOH2. Yes! 24 years later, I finally figure out how it's done. Woohoo! Something that you can take away from this is, is this, okay? This was not a homework assignment for me. I kind of turned it into a homework assignment for myself because I have this show and I like to answer the questions. And I haven't seen a problem like this in, like I said, 24 years. It's been a long time. And I only ever did like one or two of these kinds of problems. But that's not my point. My point is this. When you're faced with a problem like this and you're beating your head against the wall, how do I do this? How do I do this? When you finally succeed, when you finally get the answer, that feeling of exhilaration is the most awesome thing there is. To sum up, I used the mass of the hydroxide to find out the mass of the unknown metal. I found the number of moles of hydroxide that told me the number of moles of metal. Then I simply found the formula mass of the metal and looked it up on the periodic table. And that's it. Some people are going to try to teach you steps as to how to do something and ask you to memorize the steps. Memorizing steps doesn't really lead to creative solutions, okay? Understanding the basic fundamentals at their root level will ensure that you don't have to memorize a series of steps, that you'll be able to see the connections that will allow you to solve the problem. That's the beauty of science. There is no set procedure. Okay, yeah, there's the scientific method, but beyond that, there is no set procedure. You create the procedure. You decide how it gets done using what you know how to do. So don't try to memorize, all right? Try to understand. Try to see how the little pieces fit together so that when you get something big, you can deconstruct it and solve it one step at a time. Don't memorize what I did up here. Try to challenge yourself to figure out how you could solve that second problem by using the percent instead of the mass you're going to end up with the same thing. And I guarantee you, when you get that answer, now that you know what it is, when you see yourself write down BAOH2 on that page, there's going to, you're going to experience that same feeling of exhilaration. I hope this helped. So let's keep those questions coming, ladies and gentlemen. What are you waiting for? Ask Rosengarten.